Let's delve into the anatomy of the shoulder now. So when we talk about the shoulder itself, we, talk, we often talk about two main joints of the shoulder. So we've got the glenohumeral joint, which is the true shoulder joint. It's the joint between the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula just here. This is the, the main uh, shoulder because it's the main movements that we talk about. The other joint we're going to be discussing is the shoulder girdle. It's made up of three other joints. So we've got the sternoclavicular joint just here. Follow it down, we've got the acromioclavicular joint. And then we've also got um, the joint between the scapula and the rib cage. Um, so as it slides across the thoracic region, the shoulder girdle is the movements of uh, elevation. We've got depression. Uh, we've got retraction and then we've got protraction. Um, whereas, like I said a second ago, the shoulder, the main true shoulder, which is a glenohumeral joint, we have flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, external rotation, internal rotation, and then we also have circumduction as well. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot more movement available at the uh, glenohumeral joint. So when we look at the glenohumeral joint, um, when we delve into that, this is where um, we would class the joint as a ball and socket joint at the very top, so the superior uh, aspect of the humerus. Um, it's shaped in like a ball shape um, and that sits against a very shallow dish called the glenoid. So um, whilst we call it a ball and socket, it's not as deep as say the uh, hip joint, which is a true ball and socket where it really does fit into that socket. This one's more of like a, a shallow dish, but then because of that, it allows such great movement um, at that joint. Um, but in, in the true nature of that, of course, it then opens it up to being more prone to, to injury and uh, certain conditions. When we look underneath the shoulder, so as I've mentioned, we've got the acromioclavicular joint that sits on top. So if you imagine you've got the ball of the humerus, sits against the glenoid of the scapula, and just above we have the AC. And that space in just underneath there is called your subacromial space. And that is very, very small. And there's a lot of structures in there um, that again can become very prone to injury um, due to certain postures or repetitive uh, repetitive movements. So then when we look at the muscles that are involved in the shoulder, um, as we've mentioned, there's a lot of movements uh, available at these joints. So in, in that nature, of course, there's a lot of muscles that are involved. So we've got the pectorals uh, that come across. So we've got the pec major as well as the pec minor that comes in and attaches to the uh, coracoid process just underneath here. We have the deltoids, uh, anterior, middle, and posterior that come down to the uh, deltoid tuberosity. We have the lovely trapezius muscle, um, which comes from the OA, comes down across the shoulders and then down the back. So um, again, this muscle uh, is quite a broad muscle and is involved in quite a few of those movements. We have the rotator cuff at the back of the shoulder. So we have four muscles involved in the rotator cuff. We have the supraspinatus, which lives on top, the infraspinatus, teres minor, and then the subscapularis, which if we take the scapula off, the subscapularis lives underneath. We also have the latimus dorsi, this great big muscle along the back, which again comes up and attaches onto your humerus. So as you can see, there's a lot of muscles involved, um, again, which we will delve into a little bit more detail later. Um, but, you know, these muscles have to work together to keep that shoulder stable, whether it's the shoulder girdle we're talking about or the glenoid humeral. But ultimately the shoulder works together. So when, when we're lifting our arm up, our girdle will work with it to allow certain movements. So as we bring our arm up, the shoulder blade should start to kind of rotate down and in to allow more space in that subacromial space to allow that, that shoulder then to lift. And if that's not working um, well together, then obviously, again, we're gonna start opening up um, ourselves to, to further injuries and conditions. 
So when we're talking again, obviously about the whole system working together, it's not just muscles that are obviously involved in that. We've also got the tendons that could be damaged. Um, the whole system needs to work together. We've got ligaments that are involved in that. And we also have fascial change as well. So um, sometimes when we're looking at the shoulder, we do need to be uh, mindful that it might not actually be the shoulder that's at fault it might be coming from somewhere else so it could be a fascial uh, restriction even if it's somewhere down near the hip the fascial restriction in the hip can actually cause a restriction through the shoulder